Okay, aloha. Okay, you guys need to be louder than me one more time. Aloha. Okay, better. Okay, thank you again for coming and sharing this occasion with us as Mayor Kawakame does his first address to you folks. We'd like to also thank our musicians who are up there, Kilipaki Vaughn and also Paul Tokioka. How's about I am for them? Now, Hoku Hano Hano Award winner. Also, we'd like to mahalo Jaina for doing our Oli. How's about I am for Jaina? And of course, for our songstress, Nalani Brun, for doing the National Anthem Hawaii Pono E. So, if anybody needs her to sing, let me know, and I'm her agent. Right, Nalani? Okay, where Nalani stay? Okay. Here. Okay, again, thank you so much for being here. At this time, I would like to call up our managing director, Michael Dahilik, to give some opening remarks. Mahalo Kaleo. Before we get started, on behalf of Mayor Kawakami and his administration, we'd like to take a moment to recognize those community leaders who have joined us today. Representing U.S. Senator Brian Schatz, uh, Mr. Clyde Kodani, here. Representing U U.S. Senator Maisie Hirono, Gerald Ako, right there in the back. Representing U.S. Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, Kalana Finn. Representing Governor Ige this morning, Carice Gardner. State Representative Jimmy Tokioka, thank you for joining us this morning. Representing Honolulu Mayor Kirk Caldwell, Mr. Gary Kurokawa, who's his Chief of Staff. Our County Council Chair, Errol Kanashiro. Council Vice Chair, Ross Kagawa. Council Member Arthur Brune. Council Member Mason Chalk. Councilwoman Felicia Cowden. Councilmember Luke Evslin. And finally, Councilmember Kipukai Kuali. Thank you guys for joining us this morning. Captain Vincent Johnson, re re representing the Pacific Missile Range Facility. And Calico Santos on behalf of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Our First Lady of Kauai, Ms. Mrs. Monica Kawakami. Good morning. And the First Lady and Mayor's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Fred and Trudy DeBusca. Former Mayor and Mrs. Bernard and Regina Carvalho. Good morning. And finally, former Mayor and Council Chair Kaipoa Singh. Thank you for joining us, Chair Singh. Once again, thank you for joining us this morning. Now, without further ado, it is my honor to invite Mayor Derek S.K. Kawakami to give his first State of the County address. Mayor Kawakami. John. F. Kennedy often said, a rising tide lifts all boats. As I start on this journey as your mayor, during this time when divisiveness and negativity seems commonplace, our single most important goal is to create a community where we build each other up, not break each other down. We know there is lots of work to do. There are parks to clean, potholes to fill, and homes to build. However, I need to be clear, I cannot do it alone. We can only do it if we are working together as one. One county, one community, one people united in our pursuit to set aside our differences and rise as one. On December 3rd, 2018, our administration set out for an ambitious first 100 days in office and as I stand here now on day 94, I can tell you one thing. I wish I wasn't so ambitious. 
These past three months have been a whirlwind, and I'm proud to say on behalf of our team, we are laying critical groundwork and beginning to make progress. Let me give you a brief recap of our first 100 days. We said our team would conduct a housing summit, and we did that last month. As a result, we have innovative ideas on how our community can collaborate to build more affordable housing. We said we would open our Office of Human Concerns, and next month we will open the doors. The Office of Human Concerns, or Hale Kokua, is a co-location of existing county resources that empower those in our community who seek employment, housing, or elderly assistance or resources for mental health needs, suicide prevention, or to combat substance abuse. All of us are touched by these issues and we cannot turn our backs on those who are in most need. We rise by picking each other up when we stumble or fall. During the inauguration, I said we would do performance audits and our first communication to our County Council was a request to conduct these audits. We are committed to figuring out what we're doing well and what we need to do better. It is the best way to analyze our operations and identify opportunities for efficiencies. We are also committed to creating a healthier, happier work environment for our associates. Slowly but surely, we're getting to meet everyone on our county team from our motor vehicle clerks to our park caretakers. This has given me a better understanding of the good work our people are doing and the challenges that they face. Coming from the private sector, I believe happy associates make for happy customers and by better serving our associates, they can better serve all of you. During our first week, the number one complaint we heard was about the long lines at DMV. So in our first 100 days, with the help of our dedicated team, we changed the way people were waiting. We created a numbering system, and now we have chairs where our kupuna, mothers, and keiki can comfortably sit while they wait. It's been an incredible first 100 days, but change doesn't happen overnight although we'd like it to. And I'll be the first to tell you that our train is moving slowly by design. Before we pick up speed, we need to plan our journey and carefully lay the track for our next four years and beyond. We spent these last few months taking to heart the feedback from our associates and our community, and now it's time to get to work. Tomorrow, we will submit our budget to our county council, the very first step in laying the track to achieve our goals. As mayor, one of my fundamental responsibilities is to present a budget that reflects our common values and goals. Simply saying, we have two main goals. First, we can't just keep buying new things. We need to respect and care for what we have we need to repair our aging infrastructure and facilities, and to do that, we will invest in the tools and equipment needed to get the job done. Second, we're going to modernize. We're going to utilize technology to streamline our processes. Our employees are working on outdated manual systems, and we need to catch up to the modern age. We need to work smarter. For today, we'll give you a brief look at how we will invest our resources and what we hope to achieve and we'll lay the foundation for our next four years in office as we rise to the challenge. We have proposed an operating budget of $242 million and a capital improvement budget of $36 million. And here's the bottom line to balance this budget. We will not raise tax rates on your homes. We will not raise user fees, and we will not borrow more money for capital improvement projects. A large contributor to this year's operating budget is the $24 million in anticipated GET revenues previously authorized by the County Council. 
We will utilize those funds to expand our bus service, repair potholes, and fix our roads. Real property taxes are projected to contribute roughly $144 million in revenue. While this is a positive number, we know that the real estate market is cyclical and it would be foolish of us to not prepare for an eventual downturn in the economy. This is why our transit accommodations tax revenues remain critical to our operations. We thank Governor Ige and our state legislature for working with us to fairly distribute TAT revenues among the state and counties. Most importantly, we want to ensure that a dollar earned is a dollar well spent. Our goal is to invest every dollar toward bettering the quality of life for our residents, giving a top-notch level of service to our customers, and ensuring a world-class experience for our visitors. Let's be clear, after salaries and wages, utilities, fuel, and insurance, we have only 29% of our revenue to pay for maintaining roads, cleaning parks, and building bus stops. Although this year we are balancing our budget without fee increases, we must continue to evaluate our fee revenues to match our increase, increasing maintenance costs. Our CIP budget of $36 million focuses on projects that we can deliver on time and on budget. Being responsible, we will not borrow more money, but instead use existing funds to pay for our capital improvement projects. Again, our priority is to focus on taking care of what we have. We need to address our deferred maintenance and repair roads and facilities such as parks and our wastewater system. Further, we're looking to our fund balance to bring us up to speed in the area of information technology and keep up with demands of basic business practice. While not directly related, to our operating budget, I want to thank our Kauai legislators for the $25 million in Act 12 funds to help our island recover after last year's flood. This money will fund 26 county infrastructure projects, of which 10 projects have already been completed, including the recent reopening of Kehiliholo Road in Kilauea, and we look forward to the reconstruction of Veke Road in May, followed by the reopening of Black Pot Beach this summer. Further along with those state monies, our county council stood ready and appropriated emergency funds immediately after the disaster. We thank them for uniting during our island's time of need. Now that we've summarized the revenues and expenses of our upcoming budget, let me tell you a little more of why this money is important, where it will go and how we're going to get there. Our island is at a crossroad. Our desire to keep our Kauai way of life must be met with a progressive approach as the world changes around us. We know the challenges. We have a growing population, overused infrastructure, and crowded roads. We must rise to the expectations of our community. We know that our first budget sets the tone for the next four years, so it's important to have a clear strategic direction. There are two simple guiding principles for our administration. One is guardianship, taking care of what we have, and two, innovation, finding new ways to modernize our systems or processes create efficient and cost effective. And with that strategic direction in mind, we have identified six keys to success. Our mobility, our home, our connection, our money, our freedom, and last but not least, our heart. Moving forward, each of our county's strategic initiatives will work toward one of these six keys to success with a focus on guardianship and innovation. 
allow me to highlight a few of our priority projects for our upcoming fiscal year. Our mobility. Our goal is to ensure we have safe roads for all modes of transportation to travel through our daily lives. To achieve this, we know what we need to do, repair our roads. This has been a long-standing cry of our community, and now, with the recent GET surcharge, we have a resource we didn't have before, funding. Mahalo to Mayor Carvalho, his administration, and the County Council for paving the way to receive this funding. With roughly, thank you. With roughly 24 million in projected revenues from GET, we have dedicated three quarters of that funding to repair our roads and bridges and get our island-wide resurfacing project up and running. This is more than double the previous year's budget toward roads. But I want to be very honest with you. We have a long list of roads in disrepair, a lot more than $17 million can pay for. This is not a problem we will solve in a year, but we promise you that you will see progress. From Kilauea Road to Kwaihau and Kaapuni Roads to Papalani and Moy Road, repairs are on their way. We will increase GET funding for transportation by 1.5 million over the next year. We will meet the demand for expanded service as well as replace aging buses that were previously funded by the Obama administration. Innovation will also help us to improve as we determine which roads are in critical need of repairs while creating open contracts so we can respond faster to repave those roads. Mobility is also about designing smart communities to give all residents a choice on how they move freely within our towns. This includes ensuring safe routes to school for our keiki and a big mahalo to the Kilauea community and Get Fit Hawaii for working with our public work and planning teams in designing the new and improved school route. And thank you to our county council. Because of them, that project will be completed by this summer. By being... By being more thoughtful and innovative in our community design, we maximize access to housing, education, healthcare, and transportation. We are helping to facilitate social equity for all of our residents. From mobility, we move to the second key to success, our home. Our goal is to have safe and decent housing for our local residents where our public spaces are a welcoming and inclusive gathering place for all. The development of affordable housing continues to be a collective priority for our statewide leaders. Governor Ige re recently extended his emergency proclamation enabling Ohana Zone monies to be quickly deployed toward transitional housing. We have identified state lands near our water department in Lihue as a potential site to build such housing for our homeless families with children. We look forward to engaging with the surrounding neighbors, including the Kawamura Ohana, in designing a project that we can all be proud of. Moving to Koloa, the construction of Koa'e will provide 134 more workforce housing units in Eleele, construction on phase one of Lima Ola's 100% affordable housing project will commence this fall. And in Waimea, we are on target to start construction of 66 affordable housing units with Waimea Huakai. Taking care of our home isn't just about building houses. It also means preserving our neighborhoods, and we are investing in software to help our planning department crack down on illegal transient vacation rentals. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. If you are being disrespectful 
if you are operating an illegal vacation rental on our island, the time to cease and desist is now because we are coming down with a heavy hammer and we are taking our neighborhoods back. <laughs> Moving from taking care of our neighborhoods to taking care of our public spaces, we must also care for our recreational areas. This is our collective responsibility. We all need to do better because our park, our people, our keiki deserve it. When I, when I met with our park caretakers and other associates, there was one resounding message that I heard over and over again. Our workers need the tools and equipment required to do their job. We cannot expect our people to do good work if we're not providing them the tools to get it done. So in this year's budget, we are investing in mowers and equipment so we can keep our parks properly maintained. Additionally, we are proposing caretakers on the weekends to help us keep our parks clean on Saturdays and Sundays when our parks are in peak use. It's about taking care of where we live, this island, this state, our planet. And taking care of our planet means reducing our carbon footprint. I am proud to say that our county has reduced electricity consumption by 15% over the last five years, resulting in millions in savings. And we will continue on this path. Hats off to our partners at KIUC for setting the stage and being a leader in our state and nation in its progress toward renewable energy. We will continue to innovate around energy and will dedicate the upcoming year to laying the groundwork toward purchasing electric buses because folks, it's time to think outside of the gas can and we're going to lead by example. Innovation also means planning communities that are prepared for climate change and the effects of sea level rise because, let's face it, we live on an island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and we need to build our homes on a solid foundation to stand the test of time. Going back to our park and our home, we want to be innovative in how we design our park and playground. For starters, we want to build a skate park for our youth. Our kids should not be forced to skate in dark back alleys because they have nowhere else to go. We also met with a group of mothers of children with autism. And did you know there are no playgrounds? There is no place on this island that makes them feel a part of us, and that is simply not acceptable. So we want to go beyond our ADA requirement and build an inclusive playground for all children to feel like they belong because our parks should be a place that everyone can enjoy. But parks aren't just for our cake. We also want to invest in multi-generational playground equipment so our kupuna have a safe place to get outside and exercise. So any partner out there who wants to help us rise to this challenge to build more innovative and inclusive parks and playgrounds, we welcome your support. Moving from our home to our connections. We understand that excellent public service is the outcome of a caring environment that supports teamwork and continuous improvement. Here at the county, we are going to create a culture where we value our most important resource, our people, where our associates are not employees, but extended ohana. We want to care for our team members by investing and training opportunities from department heads to supervisors 
to each and every one of our associates. We are going to encourage health and wellness by creating a worksite wellness program for our people. And we're going to work with our union partners to help create a work schedule for our associates beyond 745 to 430. There are a number of benefits to allowing for a flexible work schedule, including offering operating hours that are more customer friendly. Ultimately, all of our initiatives aim is to improve customer service, our service to you. We are going to continue to improve upon our GIS mapping system, which has been a useful tool for our bus system, our planners, and real property tax assessment teams. And finally, we're going to invest more toward a land information management system, or LIMS, so that our departments can work on the same database instead of operating in silos. They will be able to share information freely, digitally, problem solve, and ultimately seek solutions. We are investing in technology to help streamline our processes. We've set aside $2 million in this budget for an HR records management system to move us away from paper timesheet and help our supervisors better manage employee schedules and overtime. Lastly, we want to create more self-service opportunities for our customers, such as KPD's upcoming online reporting tool, which will allow the public to submit police reports for minor incidents and the motor vehicle registration kiosk recently launched at Safeway. These initiatives will move county, service, county services to be more demand responsive, services to you when you want it, and how you want it. It will increase our efficiency and save our county time and money, which leads us from our connections to our money. Public funds are used carefully to meet our needs and we account for every dollar and invest wisely for our future. Our taxpayers work hard to fund the facilities and services that our county provides we need to be better guardians of our funds by clarifying the county's role in our community and refining what we can realistically provide. This year's budget was balanced without proposing any additional taxes or user fees or borrowing more money to accomplish our CIP project. <laughs> Further, we are committed to continuing the long-term financial plan as set forth by council resolution. As such, our budget is structurally balanced and maintains a minimum reserve of 30% of the prior year's general fund revenues. In April of last year, our county learned firsthand the need to have a healthy reserve fund. After the heavy rains and flooding destroyed portions of our island, in disaster situations, we don't have time to wait for FEMA. We need immediate access to funding to respond and take action. And when disaster strikes, we will be prepared financially to respond. I want to thank our county council for your leadership and foresight to maintain a healthy reserve fund. We look forward to continued dialogue, cooperation, and collaboration with our council members on new ideas like this to keep us fiscally sound. Moving from our money to our freedom, to enjoy what life on Kauai has to offer and take responsibility to engage one another with empathy and respect. Our freedom to enjoy life on Kauai is a direct result of those who have dedicated their careers to keeping us safe. From law enforcement, our police officers, to firefighters, and ocean safety lifeguards, as well as our park rangers and liquor control inspectors, and of course, our emergency management agency who helped us to prepare for and respond to every wind, rain, or thunderstorm that comes our way. Last month, I attended the blessing ceremony for our newest ocean safety roving patrol unit at Wanini. This will provide dedicated coverage at this very popular beach park. 
The new jet ski and equipment for this unit was provided by the Kauai Lifeguard Association, a community nonprofit. Big mahalo to KLA and all of the generous donors who funded this life-saving program. This year, our fire department is conducting a study to identify areas of increasing demand because as our population grows, so does the demand for first responders. Our police department faces similar challenges which requires KPD to look for new ways to recruit and retain officers. Over the years, KPD has been innovative in several other programs such as the creation of the Fugitive Apprehension Strike Team, or FAST, the Citizens Police Academy, and the revival of the Junior Police Academy, as well as the Chief's Challenge, a tough but fun physical competition for our recruits. These programs were fostered under the leadership of Acting Chief Michael Contreras, who will retire from the department this year after 25 years of service. Chief Contreras stepped up for our police department in a time when we needed him most, and he was passionate about building a department that was progressive and held itself accountable. Chief, can you please stand up so we can recognize you and thank you for your service. Chief Contreras will be greatly missed, but we look forward to welcoming our newly named Chief Todd Raybuck to Kauai next month. And from our freedom to our final key to success, our heart, we are supported to discover our best selves as a community. If there is one thing Kauai is known for, it's our heart. It's important that our island grows in a way that aligns with our culture so that every member of our community can thrive from farmer to artist, from keiki to kupuna. We are responsible for creating a vibrant economy for our people, and our economic development team is dedicated to helping our island's farmers and ranchers increase production of our Kauai grown products, and we want to breathe new life into our sunshine market to help these farmers sell their product. We also want to create a business innovation sector of our Office of Economic Development to explore new and emerging industries and inspire and empower our budding entrepreneurs. It is also critical that we continue to support our number one industry, our number one economic driver our visitor in. We are at a tipping point with our visitor industry. And I think we can all agree that we have to do better, both for our res residents and of course, most importantly, for our residents. With the help of Sue Konoho of Hawaii Visitors Bureau and our partners, we are dedicated to moving toward responsible, sustainable tourism, where we can all help to educate our visitors about our land and culture and respect our beautiful and yet sometimes dangerous environment. With the reopening of Kuhio Highway and Hyena State Park this summer, we have an opportunity to do things better than what we've done before. We are collaborating with KVB, Department of Transportation, Department of Land and Natural Resources, and of course, the Hyena and Hanalei communities to do a better job in managing everything from traffic congestion and parking to how we safely shuttle people to and from our most popular destination. We want to thank our North Shore community who, despite their own personal hardships, spent the last year collaborating with us on how we can protect and preserve this special part of our island.
creating a vibrant economy is not just about managing our agriculture and, or tourism industry. It's about creating a workforce that's ready for success. And there is a sector of adults on our island who are struggling, and we want to help. So we're opening Hale Kokua to get people the help they need and empower them with the tools to be successful. And I've saved our highest priority for last, our youth. If we aren't caring for our youth, we aren't doing our jobs. And that goes for each and every adult here today, no matter what you do for a living, everything that we do is to help the next generation have a fighting chance. And they need us. They need us now more than ever. Last year, last year, one in 11, one in 11 Hawaii teenagers thought about or attempted suicide. In response to this alarming statistic, I joined other community leaders to form the Kauai Resilience Project to try and figure out why our youth are losing hope. And with the help of the Kauai Action and Planning Alliance, the Hawaii Community Foundation, and the Youth Resilience Committee, we went out to ask our teens and to hear from them directly about their needs. They have ideas of how they want to change our island. They are ready to rise, and it's time their voices are heard. We are going to keep working on youth programs and promote youth entrepreneurship, art, and give our children opportunities to display their endless talent. And yes, we are proud to say we are opening an adolescent treatment and healing center on our island this year. But our ultimate goal is to engage our children before they start losing their way. Our youth are our number one investment, and our administration is committed to working with any community partner who wants to help our children rise to their full potential. That, above all else, is our highest purpose. As honored as I am to be your mayor, I am a husband. I am a father first. Monica and I want to be a part of an island community that supports our son Christopher and our daughter Haley. And I want the same for your sons and daughters, for your grandchildren and their children. So your attendance here today is not just a nice gesture, but rather a commitment to join us and rise up. We need to do better and be better. I am the luckiest guy on earth because I wake up every day on this beautiful island we call home and I get to work alongside a dedicated group of public servants and partners. And every day that we show up, we will strive and then we will rise a little higher. It is our honor. It is our privilege to be your mayor of Kauai and Niihau. We are committed to rising to this occasion. And we will do that hand in hand with all of you so that we can rise as one. Mahalo for being here today. God bless you and aloha. And before we end, I would like to call up um, Father Anthony to do the closing blessing. And then we can do Hawaii Aloha, so remain standing.
Dear God, we ask you to watch over our mayor, county council, to guide them to the goals that were mentioned in today's speech can be reached. Even though some of these issues are complex, they're not unsolvable. Remember one point. If we all work together for a unified reason, we can accomplish a lot. We ask God to watch over and bless leaders of our county coming years so they can be successful in making our island safer, better, and beautiful place for not just residents, the tourists visit us every year. Okay, again, mahalo so much for coming. Um, if you can join hands, and we're going to do Hawaii Aloha. Okay, do a circle. Come, come, come do a circle. Come, come this side. Oh, oh yeah, come. Mayor, circle, go here. You ready? Alani? E Hawaii e Oho me Tahi e Oli no E Hawaii o Hawaii E Hawaii e na o o Hawaii E Oli e Oli e I na Okay, aloha, aloha. E ha o li e na o o ha fa i e i o li e o li e ai na. Okay, aloha, aloha. Okay, aloha, aloha. Mahalo, thank you for coming. Drive home safely. Mahalo, mahalo, mahalo for all participate. Again, if you want some refreshment, refreshment outside, have some coffee, come see me here. Hawakami, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for everybody who helped. Mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. Yeah, no.